Thank you very much, Dennis. Thank you very much, the organizers. And it's a great honor for me to be included in this uh, panel of very interesting people. Uh, first of all, I would like to, for those of you that don't know, differentiate between yaje and ayahuasca. Perhaps all of us know about ayahuasca, but there is a, an area in the uh, Amazon in which there is another admixture plant used, not cicotrepiridis, and this is yaje, which is Panisterops capi and Diplopterus cabrerana. They are from the same family, Malpigiaceae. This is probably uh, older than the use, the, the use probably older, although we don't know for sure, than ayahuasca. Certainly the, the use of Panisteropsis capi alone probably is the, the oldest, and I think that uh, Dr. Manuel Torres is going to talk us uh, about that. But here we are going to talk, I'm going to talk mostly about Ayahuasca, which is uh, Vanisterosis plus Cicotria viridis. Of course, you know that both Diplopterus cabrerana and Cicotria viridis contain the, the, the methotryptamine. Okay, we probably all know, and I think Manolo is going to uh, uh, give us a quote of Villavicencio, Manolo Villavicencio, who was the first one to report uh, a trip with Ayahuasca. And uh, of course, Spruce, uh, about the same year, I think it was 1852, at the same time, Spruce was uh, then identifying the vine and also had the courage to take uh, the medicine, but uh, they gave him too many things at the same time, and he just got sick and took a coffee on top and went to his hammock. But anyway, he was uh, brave enough to be the first one. And, uh, um, Ayahuasca and Yaje are being used by many different indigenous tribes of the upper Amazon. Uh, when I did my doctoral dissertation, I, I have uh, 72, and in brackets you have the linguistic families. <coughs> so the upper Amazon is this area, this huge triangle, the Andes and the Rio Madeira and Rio Negro. The, the first really uh, pioneer in the study of Natem. In, in this case, I'm not sure whether the Schwar at the time used Diplopterus or Cicotria, but for sure they, they were using um, they were using um, um, Caliandra, Caliandra Pentanda, probably called Sumi. And anyway, the, the brew was called Natem. And Rafael Casten made a, wrote a very uh, detailed uh, um, description of the ceremonies, and they were collective ceremonies. They were not the more, I mean, traditional one in, in, the, in the Peruvian Amazon, very few people in the dark. No, these were big celebrations in which men and women were, were uh, present. Casten was the one who also um, reported uh, the whole process of uh, head shrinking among the shore. Another pioneer, and I was very, very sorry, to find out too late that he just died, I mean, 2002. I could have met him, I could have been trying to meet him, you know, but I, I never thought that he was even alive. Is Irving Goldman, who uh, worked in, in, the, in Colombia in the third, uh, 1939 to 1940, um, in Monde Cubeo. He has uh, also very uh, detailed um, descriptions of the ceremonies in Monde de Cubeo. It's a, it's a whole ethnography. Of course, we have to pay tribute to Schultes. Without him, we will not be here. And since uh, Mark Plotkin is going to talk about him, I just leave it for him. But another great pioneer was Gerardo Reisel Dolmatov, the Austrian Colombian a scholar who is practically the father of Colombian anthropology and archaeology. And he was documenting the use of um, Capi, you know. Uh, probably with the Diplopterus, um, then Yahe, uh, among uh, different uh, um, indigenous tribes uh, of the Tucano family. Uh, Raisa Dolmatov wrote this, uh, this very crucial work, Amazonian Cosmos, in which for the first time we become aware of the importance of Capi among indigenous uh, Amazonian tribe. Without, uh, this book really opened a whole chapter 
Uh, and th then he uh, also wrote The Shaman and the Jaguar, which uh, he uh, points out the, uh, the link between uh, shaman, uh, shaman and, sh and jaguar transformation. There are also other animals, but anyway, he put an emphasis. And this, uh, um, this uh, shamanic transformation into jaguar, you find it all over Central America and South America. It's one of the most common motifs in, in the uh, um, Amerindian shamanism. Uh, Raisa Dolmatov was also, he also tried and recorded his uh, journey and uh, transcribed, it's published in this book. Uh, he realized the importance of the, uh, of the iconography of the Tucano, all related to the visionary world. So, so he uh, found out that all the narratives, all the mythology, all the iconography, Practically, it's impossible to understand this uh, indigenous group without reference to Capi in the visionary world. And something similar did uh, Jean Landon in Montesiona in Colombia. She also found that all the narratives, everything, all the facial painting, the, the all decorations, everything is related also to the visionary experiences. <coughs> we have to name, of course, uh, Michael Harner, who did his ethnography in Mount de Schwar. Uh, after, much later, much after Karsten, and in, I think it was 1973, he published Hallucinogens and Shamanism, which is practically an anthology. They are also uh, a reference to other plants, but it's practically an anthology uh, about Yahé and Ayahuasca. Uh, later, as you know, uh, well, he had two experiences, um, and uh, he decided to create a whole school of shamanism in the US without the use of any plants. Although he was all, always, he is still alive, sympathetic to the plants, but he, he thought that it was a better way in, in America to do it legally, you know, so introduce people to uh, um, shamanism. Thinking about the globalization of ayahuasca, that we are, this happening right now, uh, 50 years ago, Ayahuasca was not in the horizon. I mean, not in the ethnopharmacological search of psychoactive drugs. There was only one article by Claudio Naranjo about harmaline, but nothing else. But anyway, so if we think about the, 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 the spread of ayahuasca, um, I would like first to mention pasto, you know, uh, in Colombia. Um, pasto was, had a, uh, related, I mean, there were a, a lot of, um, well, here in the Sibondoy Valley, we have two indigenous tribes, the Kamsa and the, shall I put it somewhere? Okay. The Kamsa and the Ingano. And the Kamsa, uh, the Kamsa stay mostly uh, in the Sibondoy Valley, but the Ingano used to travel a lot, went to Pasto, they had contact, they didn't have, uh, it's too high, they didn't have, uh, they could not grow the ayahuasca, but they have contact with the lowland indigenous groups. So here is the Sibondoy Valley. This is a photo I took many years later. And, and they have contact with lowland Indians from Mocoa. They bought the yaje from them. Uh, the Sibondoy, the Kamsan, and the Gano were the great specialists of Brugmansia. I mean, if you go to the Sibundoy Valley, you know, it's, it's probably the most, the richest in the world uh, uh, in terms of species of Brugmansia. And uh, when I went, this is, when I went in 1984 to the Sibundoy Valley, I, I met this man, this young man who was uh, being trained by one of the Kamsai Indians. And I just wonder, I mean, this, this was a, a mestizo. Um, you know, a farmer who went to be trained to become a shaman, or to, to become a curandero, they dropped the word shaman. And, um, and um, I just wonder how old this tradition was. In 1984, I, I met him, but I don't know if we go back, 1971 is when I first got in touch with Yahé. Uh, here again, Pasto, we have Mocoa, and then Florencia, I was born in Florencia, in the eastern slope of the Andes. And uh, 
I met in seven, well, in, I have met him all my life, really, you know, since I was a child, this man, uh, Apolinar Yakanamihoi, but um, it was only through meeting Terence that I learned about Yahé. And, uh, and then through this man, Hans Mosler Herbert, a German guy who had a restaurant in Florencia, uh, Terence and I used to go, and uh, Erika, his girlfriend, uh, at the time used to go to, to Hans because he was the, the f best food in Florencia. And Hans, uh, he was in touch with, the, uh, with Apollinar. He had a very interesting story. Uh, and uh, he arrived to the Caquetá, I don't know how many years uh, when I met him, but he was young at the time. Uh, and he had been with the Tucano Indians. He told me about Brugmansia. He told me how to prepare Brugmansia, you know, uh, taking several flowers, putting it in the, in the forehead, in the back of the head, uh, go to sleep, relax. And, um, and uh, he said that he pr it produced uh, lucid dreams. And indeed, some weeks after I was in, the, in, in Florencia, I went back, I was living in Norway, I started to have these lucid dreams. And I was, in fact, I was very worried you know, because I didn't know much about this. And he went to the doctor, you are just dreaming, until I found some literature about the astral body projection that makes sense, you know, and, and so. But anyway, so there is something to investigate, you know. <laughs> if, if there is any connection there between the atropine alkaloids in Brugmansia and and this kind of uh, lucid dreams. And this is in 1971. Okay. And this is Hans uh, now. I just by chance, about three weeks ago, I met a Colombian woman who knew uh, his daughter, who gave me his phone number, and I, and I talked to him. And um, so I, I am planning to interview him for the publication because he probably has a very interesting story. And there was another person who I don't have a photo, was a, a, a Hungarian uh, called Carlos. Uh, uh, Hans said that uh, his uh, name was Kalman. I thought that it was the last name, but Kalman in Hungarian is both first name and last name. So we are trying to, to trace him. All the several people said that he is probably dead. He was a, a football uh, star. He was playing with the Hungarian uh, national team and went to Venezuela, uh, fell in love with a woman, uh, lost all his money. Then, he, <laughs> then, then he was uh, stranded there. Somehow went to the the Caquetá, the region where I was born, and they became uh, friends with Hans. This is perhaps interesting, you know, because already 1971. You know, I was introduced to Yahé through this, you know, a German, a Hungarian, an American, you know. So, so um, Ede Freska, who is also Hungarian, he was thinking, uh, is thinking of to organize a conference next year in Prague, in, in, sorry, in Budapest. And, and he's thinking to try to invite all these people. He says, he says that, the, the, okay, perhaps the, the, the globalization of Ayahuasca started, you know, in the 90s, you know, but here is the inoculation, in a way. It happened in 1971. Anyway, 1979, uh, uh, seven year, uh, eight years later, I went back to Yurayaco, had my second Ayahe experience. In the meantime, I was doing my, my homework, reading as much as I could um, about di different ethnographies and plants, uh, uh, sacred plants. But anyway, so I, I went again and took Yahé for the second time. If when I took Yahé, um, there were also all the peasants uh, present in the ceremony. The thing is that for me, it was so strong that I hardly remember anything what happened out there. You know, I, I became a serpent, I vomited, I saw, you know, I mean, it was just so extraordinary experience. But I remember that there were some people around me, uh, so some mestizo who arrived after had drunk uh, the, the brew. Um, so there was already contact with the, uh, in Colombia with mestizo, both in the Sibondoy Valley and in the Caqueta region. By the way, many years later, uh, this is Natividad, the woman here, the second to the left. Um, uh, Natividad it was, uh, is, uh, well, was porque, because uh, Roberto died. Uh, Roberto's wife, Roberto was the son of Apollinar, 
and, uh, and she is now a very important uh, yajecera, uh, who together with other yajeceros make, uh, uh, had an encounter, an uh, encuentro de taitas, in, in that area, in Yurayaco. And they published this very stern um, um, complaint about doctors and other people using their sacrament. You know, so, so this is, but these are several families. They are very much opposed to, to Western people uh, taking the ceremony, the, 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 the sacred uh, sacrament. But on the other hand, in other, other indigenous tribes, they are very open to it, you know, but just to have this into account. Okay, now we go to the second area, which is most known today, the area of Tarapoto, Pucalpa, Iquitos. Um, very important to have into account that a lot of the uh, vegetalismo uh, a strongly influ Andean influence. You see it in the mythology, you see it in some of the, the songs and some of the words being used. Uh, you, you know, Chachamama, Yurayaku, um, uh, uh, um, um, Chuyachaki, many of the words uh, uh, used in the, the same Icaro, although I'm not sure. Uh, I, I thought that it would be from, the, from Icaray, which means to blow, give energy. Um, but I'm not sure about that. By the way, uh, Icaro, you know, many people say Icaro, but it's Icaro, for, it's from Icaray, okay? And, um, and so, and, and, and Pucalpa. Okay, so there is a, a, a very strong Andean influence into the Amazon. So in fact, all this area, you know, is the, the eastern slope of the Andes, um, is a, to a great extent a cultural area. Lay, much later we are talking uh, about the third, uh, um, area of uh, um, diffusion of ayahuasca, which is the, the churches in Brazil. Anyway, so um, there was already uh, psychologists and psychiatrists, Peruvian psychiatrists, interested in the, in, in the phenomenon of, uh, of uh, vegetalism, of uh, ayahuasca use, especially in Pucallpa. Uh, but it was uh, Marlene Dawkins de Rios, the first one who wrote uh, a, a monograph about this, although her work was restricted to Belén, which is one of the uh, areas in Iquitos. And so didn't, she didn't do much work among the indigenous groups. So, so it was uh, 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 restricted. She wrote uh, many, many articles about ayahuasca. And, uh, and, include, and then uh, uh, lately, uh, you know, she, she wrote these uh, this, uh, books. Uh, now the thing is, what uh, I, I was very astonished to learn, uh, the, uh, one year before she died, she uh, had an interview, and she said, I took ayahuasca only once. You know, which is, you know, uh, you know, she, uh, you know the, the psychedelic journey of Marlene Dovkin in the Rio, so, you know, so only once, you know, so. Okay, of course, uh, at that time, only, uh, the only literature known was the Yahé letters. Uh, Bruce Lamb, uh, Wizard of the Upper Amazon, can I think it was also 1973. Uh, uh, this is a photograph is by Kat Harrison. Um, and um, about Manuel Cordoba Rios. Uh, later came another book uh, about him. This is very um, embellished story, but you, it hit the popular culture. I think that a lot of people started to uh, know about ayahuasca through this book, uh, Wizard of the Upper Amazon, and later this other one. I don't know how, how many books he sold, but anyway. So, and uh, I was then in, uh, I went in to Iquitos in night, well, uh, after, being in Yurayaco for the second time, I thought that I would, be, I would make a film about Don Apolinar, but unfortunately he died a few months later. Then it was Theron who told me, go to Iquitos, there are some very interesting uh, curanderos there. There I met Don Emilio and I made this film, uh, Don Emilio and his little doctors. Now I collected so much information by making this film that I, I realized that I had a doctoral dissertation in hand. So I went every summer uh, that I had free, I was then living in Helsinki, went every summer uh, and um, uh, documented the practices, uh, the, the ideas of health and illness, uh, collected plants and, and so on. And uh, 
perhaps the most important idea that I got out of this uh, meeting with Don Emilio and other ayahuasqueros is the idea of plant teacher. He said that ayahuasca is just one plant, one of the doctores, uh, but there are many other doctores. And I realized that uh, uh, many of them were admixture plants to ayahuasca, they put it in the ayahuasca, but others, they were used by themselves. The other very interesting thing is that um, they used the ayahuasca brew in order to study the properties of other plants. So they will put something in the, in the, in the brew and, and by seeing the visions, you know, in, in the idea, in the, uh, they, they, they think that the spirit of the plant will communicate with them and they will uh, tell them what, uh, uh, what it is for. Uh, so so um, Bristol in the Sibondoy Valley, uh, Valley, he had found something similar and he realized that um, putting different plants into the yaje brew was a, a way to increase the pharmacology, just doing the, the same thing, just putting a plant, you know, getting the visions or seeing the, the changes in the, in, in the effects, and, and so they will uh, 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 realize that this is for this, for that. So, so there are many ayahuascas, really. So uh, I think that what I did, my field work, I collected something like about 70, uh, plants, but uh, later on other people have been adding in. Probably now we have something like 200 plants. And as Dennis uh, said, so very little study, even though we published, of course, uh, the, the, f the first paper we published in the, in the in, uh, American Indígena in Mexico, in Spanish, didn't have much impact. The second one was in a book uh, by Schultes, had no impact. And even, you know, so many years later, we still, you know, we, we, we don't know uh, about many of these plants. So, so there is uh, much work to be done, and I hope young people will take this, um, this task. So I published in 84 uh, the concept of plant as teachers that came in, then in German, in, in German next year, uh, 85, in Spanish, and then in, in French in 86. So, of course, the idea that uh, the uh, plants have spirit is common in the Amazon, not only plants, but also uh, animals. Uh, so, uh, in, in this area, all, the, for instance, the big trees, the big lupuna, lupuna trees, the ceiba, they are supposed to have uh, also spirit, and you are able to communicate with them through the means of ayahuasca, and they are very respectful. For instance, they will never uh, urinate or defecate near one of these big trees because they believe then that the spirit of the tree will, you know, will uh, take revenge and hit you. The idea of plant teacher uh, it came uh, almost simultaneously uh, in the book by, by Jean-Pierre Chomel, Chomel, Voir Savoir Pouvoir, uh, and he writes the, 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 the plants in, in the Yagua cosmology, L'Unique Chemin de la Connaissance, you know, the, only path of knowledge. I found the same idea in the Simundo Valley in the 84, I think, uh, when I was working with Miguel Chindoy, who was uh, the son of Salvador Chindoy, so, uh, who worked with Schultes. Uh, and um, I was then making a, a map of the plants and collecting plants. And uh, this uh, mestizo that I mentioned earlier, I know this blue poncho, he is the one who told me, this is the garden of science, el jardín de la ciencia. So the same idea of plant teachers found, uh, found in the Sibundoy Va Valley. In fact, when I took ya uh, Yajé with Apolinar, uh, uh, remember after vomiting and going into his house and, and I was marvel and then I, I told him, Don Apolinar, you know so much. And he said, it's not me, it's Yajé. You know, and, and Don Emilio, the same thing, you know, it is not me, it's Ayahuasca, who is the, you know, the real teacher. Um, when, uh, of course, many of these mestizos um, are partially indigenous or culturally uh, indigenous. Um, and uh, the, uh, once I was with Jose Corral, and he was preparing Ayahuasca, and Ayahuasca was bubbling, and then he said, Look, these are people. And uh, of course, I, then later on, I understood that we, uh, we have to uh, understand this uh, as 
very um, uh, prevalent in Amerindian thought. Uh, this is from v Eduardo Viveiro de Castro. Ameri Amerindian shamanism appears to be guided by the... Ah, sorry. Uh, the, the idea is that for in, in Western science, we, want, we try to be as objective as possible. So you put the subject completely separated, you study whatever is there and try not to no influence at all to take out all the subjective. In the Amerindian thought, it's quite the opposite. Amerindian shamanism appears to be guided by the inverse principle. To know is to personify, to take the point of view of that which is to be known, or what or, what, or rather of who. For shamanic knowledge envisages something which is someone, another subject or agent. The other takes the form of a person. I think that perhaps Glenn Shepard is going to uh, touch these uh, ideas later on. Uh, but anyway, I've been thinking uh, so that the, the way of, of the, the epistemology of, uh, of many of, of these Amerindian is, is that instead of you see what it is out there and you try to analyze it uh, from all parts and take it apart and so on, uh, you try to become what you are uh, interested in. It's your, it's, so it's, a, it's an, a way of knowledge uh, of identification or even transformation into the object of what you are, uh, or you are studying, personifying so that you become one and that you understand it not only from the outside but also from the inside. And uh, Eduardo Vivera Castro has also some other very interesting ideas. In mythical times, animals, plants, and humans were all persons able to transform. They were all shamans. So in a way, taking ayahuasca or yaje or these other sacred plants is to travel back into the primordial time. You go back into the beginning where everything was, uh, everything was uh, uh, conscious. Every, uh, everything, were, uh, all uh, were uh, people, persons. And the, the original condition common to humans and animals is not animality, but rather humanity. So. So it's like everything is human, everything. And, and when they talk about, for instance, the, the house of the spirit, they, they, they say, oh no, they, you know, they, they, they have their houses, they have their houses, but they are like ours, only much better than ours, you know, but they are like ours. So they, they have this idea of cities as well, or towns, and many, of, many indigenous tribes have this idea. And then the shamans are able to see the non-human beings as they see themselves, because they see themselves as human. The jaguar see himself as a human, and we are the jaguar for the jaguar. So, those playing the role of active interlocutors in transpacific dialogue, <coughs> transpacific uh, dialogues. And Philippe de Scola has this other idea, a, a reflecting of the difference between nature and culture. He said that a cosmology where the majority of plants and animals are included in a community of persons sharing most of the faculties, behaviors, and moral codes ordinarily granted to humans hardly meets the criteria of such an opposition. If everything is, uh, everything is, uh, is alive, every, uh, there are all persons out there, so how can we differentiate between, between uh, culture and, uh, and uh, nature? So it's all the same. Okay, so I, I worked several summers uh, with the mestizo uh, collecting plants. I mean, here they are using nettles for healing. Very often I left the microphone open and I went for a walk uh, to be able to get conversations, with permission, <laughs> a conversations among them about, you know, patients and spirits and uh, stories, you know. And, and, uh, yeah, and I did several periods of diet. I, uh, uh, to follow uh, the, the whole procedure. At that time, in Iquitos, with the ayahuasca ceremonies, you find it only in the periphery of, of, of the city. Uh, you have to ask a lot to, to, to get uh, access to some ayahuasqueros. There were, I don't know how many, but, but it was not so, so that easy. And uh, so one, Don Emilio, introduced me to Jose Corral, who introduced me to other people, uh, and so on. And uh, so this is the kind of ceremonies. Uh, very often, the young people went there just to see the movie. There was no healing involved, you know, just to see the movie. So. Uh, I was curious about 
the whole process of diet. But uh, I will go back. So I was asking some of these young people, you know, you're, you know, what about doing the diet? Finally, I convinced two of them, Don Emilio's son and this young man here, uh, in black, to do the diet. And I thought I'm going to make a film about the whole process of keeping the diet. And uh, so went to uh, uh, Don Jose Corral's place and started the diet. And I said, I'm going to do the diet with you. You know, so we all do the diet. But after uh, some days, they could not take it anymore. You know, one of them put salt. You know, salt is a big thing, you know. And, you know, I said, oh, okay. And the other one, 14 days, you know. So in the end, I was the only one who, who did the diet. And I could not make a film about myself doing the diet, you know. So, so but, but then later on, when I was, uh, I was, I spent some time with the, with the uh, uh, Shipibo, Curandero, I did the diet, I, wa I was very interested, you know, I did it several times. I was interested in, uh, to, to know what happens, you know, when you do the diet. Okay, I learned a few things, you know, it was never long enough, one month, you know. So, so, so it's, it's really not, not enough to, you know, uh, to, to learn so much. But one thing I learned, when I, especially when I was with Don Jose Corral, I was having often lucid dreams. And I told Don Jose, you know, very often I, I have this dream. He said, ah, no, now you're learning. So I think that there is some kind of involvement. Uh, when you're doing the diet during the daytime, everything is kind of dreamy, you know. Uh, you, uh, um, in the beginning you are hungry, you know, but then you, you, know, you completely forget about that. You are in a dream state and somehow the things seems to be, plants, you know, they seem to be talking to you <laughs> in a way, you know. Uh, in a different way, you know, so you see nature in another way. So, uh, and then at night, very often, out of body experiences, you know, going out there in the forest and so on. So perhaps part, part of it is involved in the real initiation. I don't say that I had real initiation because one month is too, too little. I, uh, I did it several times. But anyway, at the end of uh, all these uh, several periods of field work, then I wrote my doctoral dissertation. The, it was in comparative religion, not in anthropology. All this very anthropological, more anthropological than comparative. And then, then uh, in, in, in um, the Czech Republic, they made a very beautiful edition of it. Never come, uh, come in, 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 in Spanish. Uh, in the 2000, I don't remember what year was, Dennis, that we were invited to the first conference uh, by Alan Schumacher. Schumacher. 1986. Uh, uh, 86. No, no, but much later, no, in the year 2000 or something. 2005. 2005, okay. Uh, yes. That one, yeah. So, in to, uh, you know, I, I, uh, the, the book was published, uh, Vegetalismo. They printed something like 950 copies only. And, uh, but somebody in Canada read my, my thesis, went to, uh, went to Iquitos, went, uh, met Don Jose Corral, and then created uh, the botanical garden around his house. So, so, so I was uh, astonished, you know, that Jardin et Botanico, why Ramama? And I think that to a great extent, it started, you know, uh, I think Barbara Friedman, she wrote a very nice uh, essay in uh, 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 Ayahuasca, uh, Shamanism and Beyond. She wrote a very interesting uh, uh, essay how uh, many of these Ayahuasqueros have their garden, you know, around. And, I, and, I think, and it has been, a, a lot because of the Western, they, they say, oh, let's have the garden, you know. Of course, many of them, they have their plants, you know, but to do the, the idea of a garden and with many plants and, and labels and all that uh, it came you know, uh, from Western. Um, and uh, this is, uh, Dennis wrote uh, and made this photo of Don Jose Corral when he was 100, huh? 99. 99, so he died 102, so. Um, I regret very much, when I was doing my, my work in the Peruvian Amazon, I regret so much that I didn't go to the Brazilian side, you know, because, uh, I, is it, well, it was kind, kind of difficult to go from Pucallpa to Cruzeiro. There was an airplane, you know, from time to time. But, you know, finally, when I went there in 1984, it was uh, on the plane of a Peruvian minister who was going to Rio Branco, and then I took my film to Rio Branco, and it was shown there. 
uh, it, it was advertised like the origin of ayahuasca, uh, uh, origin of Santo Daime. And uh, Clodomir Monteiro, a, a friend who did uh, the first studies of, of the Brazilian phenomenon, he said that that occasion was the first time, the very first time, that all the three churches, the UDV, the Santo Daime, the Barquinha, were together in one room to, to see the film. But anyway, years later, I, I went to Boca do Acre. I met this man, Senor Domingo, who prepared ayahuasca, and then he was singing songs very similar to those of the UDV and he was invoking Cayano, but he didn't know anything about Mr. Gabriel. So, and then another, another uh, uh, a lawyer told me that he had uh, 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 heard uh, about Senor Flores, who also knew uh, about Cayano, he, and uh, he has many stories and so on. And, you know, this Brazilian vegetalist uh, tradition never investigated, and I think it's now too late, you know, because, you know, so what a pity, you know, it's just like uh, this is stupid of me, you know, that of course, you know, there is a border, you know, but the language changes, but, but the whole tradition is there, and, uh, and not only in Brazil, but also in Bolivia and so on, so, yeah. At that time, uh, you know, here a little connection with the Heraclitus, uh, where is uh, Tango, uh, Deborah, okay, you're there. So, uh, uh, Dimitri Ephibulos uh, uh, from Cyprus, he was very important to all the anthropologists working in Iquitos at the time because he had this motorcycle, you know. We were always broke, you know, very little money. And, uh, and so he took us to places and he became very interested as well in all these, you know, here we are preparing a, a, a cigarette of Banisteropsis capi and then taking the mushrooms. And he, uh, he, once when I arrived to Iquitos, went to see him, he showed me this photograph, he said, look at this, and now look at that. And then, uh, uh, you know, so by changing 90 degrees, suddenly you see the spirits. And, and I uh, helped him to, uh, well, I organized the, his first uh, exhibition of photographs in Bogota. Then we did another ex exhibition in Pasto and the third one in Leticia. And it was very interesting because we thought us went to see the exhibition and they were very interested. So oh, the white people are doing something interesting. <laughs> so he published a book, I don't remember what year, uh, uh, Spirits of the Rainforest. Uh, I, I was very sorry to hear that he died about a year or uh, two years ago. Another very important event that took place in 1985, I organized the first symposium on ayahuasca uh, within the context of the Americanist Conference. Uh, the uh, Americanist Conference takes place every two years in Europe and in, in the Americas. In 1985, it was in Bogota. Pity that I don't have a group photo. You know, at the time I was, I, I, I recorded the whole thing, even though I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't take photos. But anyway, um, it was uh, important because suddenly, it, for the first time, we were, Gene Lando was there, Schultes sent the paper, um, uh, Brown Gays, who was the, the great botanist, he sent us a paper, he could not be there. Plutarco Naranjo, uh, Ecuadorian, who wrote a book about ayahuasca, was there as well. And, and so, and I uh, invited Guillermo Arevalo, I managed to get money to, uh, for him to get from Pucallpa to Bogota to the conference, and he wrote a paper, and he did it uh, the shamanic way, you know, because I, I explained, you know, conference, you have to present something, you know, it's going to take about 20 minutes, half an hour, it's about 12 pages, you know, he was keeping the diet, and he wrote a very good paper, uh, that he presented, Angelica Gebhar, uh, uh, later, uh, she was specialist, she was very impressed and said that this is very accurate, very important paper. Anyway, so out of end, uh, I met in this conference Donna and Manolo. And uh, uh, there was uh, the seed, this encounter was the seed of many of the things that happened later. Uh, with Dennis, we, you know, collected plants and uh, uh, this is, I don't remember what year it was that we were collecting. I took these plants to Hawaii. And thanks to Schultes, he called me, uh, Helsinki said, Luis Eduardo, I'm sending you a magic carpet. I didn't know what he was talking <laughs> about. And it was this uh, Harvard University officer. 
And thanks to this, this uh, Harvard card, I was able to take to Hawaii many of the uh, many plants. You know, I see that many of the cicotrias, the, you know, that now they prepare ayahuasca in, in Hawaii. Many of these cicotrias, I took it, and I also took their uh, Diplopterus cabrera. I also, that I took it from a, a curandero living near Iquitos. Uh, his wife had taken it from the from the uh, from Ecuador. And so, and I took it to Hawaii, and from there I know that it's now everywhere. In that year, 1985, the same year of the conference, uh, Dennis introduced me to Pablo Amaringo, and he showed some uh, 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 paintings, um, uh, aquarels, really, on cheap paper, but very accurate, you know? And, uh, and so, uh, I asked pa Pablo, Pablo, do you remember the visions you had? When, because he said that he had been a shaman, well, a vegetalista, you know, uh, he knew all these plants, you know, he knew the mythology very well, so I was very impressed. So when he said that, I, 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 I remarked, you know, you, you have a very good memory, you remember very well. Uh, yeah, he said, I remember everything I have seen. He has this fantastic eidetic memory. So he gave Dennis and me, each of us, you claim four paintings, I don't know. I have only one. Three, four, four. <laughs> All right. Okay. But anyway, this is the one that I got. And I took it to, uh, to Finland. And what I was is, okay, I've been working with the vegetalista tradition uh, for several years. And, uh, uh, but this was completely unfamiliar. Many of these elements completely unfamiliar. What is this? You know, you know, so I, I was, you know, this looks like Chinese, they like a throne, you know, kind of Inca, but also perhaps, you know, it's a, a mixture of, of elements, a city, and then you have a flying saucer there. And so, so I took a photocopy of it and I sent it to Pablo and then asked him, what is this, what is this, what is this? And what he came, it was a long, and also, uh, there were some elements in Dennis's uh, painting. I asked him, what is this? And then he came, the description with the names of the spirits and everything, you know, very detailed. And I said, wow, this is absolutely extraordinary, you know? Uh, uh, and, and then I started a collaboration. I went, then I changed completely my, my, my career in a way. <laughs> Instead of going to the, to the vegetalistas, then I, I concentrated on Paolo. I got for him the best possible materials. I always went via Miami. Manolo and Donna helped me to, to buy the, absolutely the best uh, possible artwork. And, and started a collaboration that lasted many years. The next slide is not the one should be here. But anyway, so this is, then it came all this uh, mythology. This is a large uh, oil painting called uh, uh, Cosmologia Amazonica. So, of course, many of these elements I could recognize from working with the uh, vegetalistas. The, uh, they, were, they talk about the mermaids, the yakumama, uh, 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 the, some of these birds, uh, you know, tunchi, uh, you, you, uh, I've heard it. But many of these uh, completely different. Um, so now the thing is reflecting about this is that Pablo had a whole cosmology, but I had never found uh, met any other person who will validate that cosmology, who will say, oh yes, yes, these are these spirits. When the book was published, and I was having copies of the paintings, friends of ours uh, I mean, uh, took it to other places, you know, to, when in Iquitos, in Pucallpa, everybody recognized, when they saw this painting, oh, this is ayahuasca, immediately. And uh, friends took it to indigenous tribes, and well, they say, oh, there was big, big commotion, not of the details of the elements, but of the general feeling of the vision. So, so with collaborated uh, uh, years, I mean, I, I, I could talk about each of these paintings a long time because uh, uh, he made very detailed descriptions uh, of it. And uh, my understanding of vegetalism expanded because some of these elements were, uh, you know, this is for instance, an, it, this is an attack, you know. The darker, you know, it's an attack. It's so, so he's having help from a spirit there who sends some sort of cable down there so that, uh, that they can get out of this. I later uh, had visions similar to this, you know. So, so now at least I can put, he called these tingunas, I can put a name to that kind of phenomenon. For him, um, for, for Pablo, uh, um, 
it was a kind of electromagnetic phenomenon. Uh, so when uh, an ayahuasquero finishes his work, he will, uh, he will uh, send away, <laughs> send away the, the, the visions, you know, just blow them, you know, and, and let them go. Or you, or you with the Nicaro, you can call them, but there is a Nicaro to let them go. And I experienced something similar uh, like this, you know. And well, you know, these are many other. I will not get into details. The, the great uh, three serpents, the Sachamama, Yakumama, um, uh, Yakumama and Waira Mama, and notice the flying saucers. I, something that I realized when I was there is that the Waira, uh, you know, the Yakumama, um, they believe uh, in Iquitos, Pucalpa, and all the way to the mouth of the Amazon, uh, they call it the Cobra Grande, which can become a boat. So there is this, uh, this uh, identification of the serpent, canoe among some indigenous tribes, and the boat, even submarine, and so on. But what I never realized was that also there was an identification between the white amama and some sort of flying saucers. And in fact, I, I, I interviewed some uh, people. And, um, well, the story is that, <laughs> uh, that when I was doing the diet uh, with the Chipibo, I took a uh, one of these small boats, and I was in the hammock, and then uh, 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 somebody woke me up and said, the captain is calling you. I went out, and, and uh, there was a big, uh, you know, about half of the, or one third of the full moon, an object there, just a light, and gradually went up. But uh, the captain was telling me many stories. He said that he has seen many of these. He said that once the whole flying saucer was in front in the river, he had to stop the boat and, and many stories. So I, I didn't have my video camera with me. I said, oh, I wrote here the name of the boat and I said, I have to go back again. And I did. Next year I went with the camera, I found the boat, but he, had, uh, he was working in another boat. But there were people uh, cleaning the engine and I, before leaving I thought, Okay, have you, any of you, I was doing a camera, have you, any of you seen a flying saucer? All of them. A big story, you know, so I have a very nice footage of that thing, you know. Anyway, so in 1991, the, this book was published. And, and um, well, uh, Dennis and other people are saying that this is perhaps, you know, one of the elements that launched the, uh, the globalization of ayahuasca because this book you know, was a ta coffee table book, you went to many places. And, uh, and I think that not only because of Paolo's extraordinary paintings, but I think that also I presented a very careful um, um, description of what is needed. I mean, the, the story of the vegetalistas, the importance of the plant teachers, the Icaros, the diet and all that. And I think that this was presented as a package somehow. So that it was not only ayahuasca and take, you take ayahuasca and you see all these things, but you see ayahuasca is a plant teacher. You, in order to learn from it, you have to keep a diet, you learn songs and all that. So somehow it, 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 it was like a sort of package that, uh, and then a lot of people went to, to, uh, to Peru and so on and uh, have not been since then and I'm almost afraid to go. But uh, Eugenia, <laughs> Eugenia is going to talk to us. I'm very curious about the phenomenon of what happened after I left in the 80s, you know. Yeah. Okay, so I did also some uh, work in Brazil, and this is the other uh, uh, part, uh, uh, the other very important focus of uh, uh, expansion of ayahuasca, is Rio Branco, Porto Velho, where um, uh, the, or the churches were uh, created. And this was after a, 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 a Brazil took part of, uh, uh, in the Second World War on the side of the Allies and sent some troops to Mussolini, uh, to fight Mussolini, and, other, and then he sent the so-called soldados da borracha, which means the robber soldiers, to, um, to uh, uh, the Japanese have taken Southeast Asia, so uh, Schultes was sent to, to Colombia to, to, to find a, a rubber, to, to catalog. Uh, and then these people were uh, there, uh, many of the Brazilian Northeast, who are actually Af African, Afro-Brazilian, uh, Afro went sent to work as, uh, in the Borracha. And all the, the three great uh, founders of the Brazilian phenomenon, they come from the Northeast. And, uh, 
uh, blanks. Uh, Raimundo Irineo in the 30s created his church in the 30s. Uh, Daniel Pereira de Matos, Barquinha in the 40s, and then Jose Gabriel de Costa created the UDV in the 60s. I, I did myself, you know, the, 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 the Santo Daime, the, the first line of Raimundo, uh, Raimundo Irineo Serra had been studied. There were several master theses, but no, nothing was known about Barquinha. So I did uh, several periods of field work here in Barquinha, and we, oh, this is, uh, sorry, uh, this is Jose Gabriel de Costa, uh, an early photo of him with the first communities. But anyway, so I did the uh, work uh, with the Barquinha, and what, what fascinated me was the, the integration or the syncretism of elements from not only Am Amazonian, not so much uh, Amazonian, but a lot of popular Catholicism, uh, Umbanda, Candomblé, Cardicism, you know, from the uh, 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 French doctor who wrote the uh, Book of Spirits. So a uh, Portuguese took it to, uh, this book to Brazil, and nowadays we have something like six million Cardicists in, in, in Brazil. Uh, the, the use of this white, uh, it is, uh, they introduce it. And then, of course, esoteric ideas, including some oriental ideas like karma, reincarnation, and so on. It is also found there. I was fascinated because I was able to document this incorporation of spirits, of four kinds of spirits. And, and you see the, 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 the syncretism. You have Catholic iconography. You have black slaves. You have mermaids. All of these in the services in the church in which they, they sing songs and meditate, but then after midnight, they go out to the terrero, and that is like completely different. They take ay uh, ayahuasca again, and then there is the, 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 the spirits are taking over. They have uh, different um, uh, songs and rhythm, which uh, are invoked uh, particular spirits, and that is the time for, for that, you know, so completely. And this is the iconography, and uh, very, very interesting. Um, um, for instance, uh, they have mediums, they take ayahuasca, incorporate these, uh, these spirits, and then they, it is open f uh, every Wednesday, I think, I the church was open for people to go to ask for advice, simply. Advice from, from the, the, the pretos vellos, the, the old uh, black slaves. And even I found a case in which uh, uh, one preto vello, uh, the, uh, one woman, went to see a preto vello who was his husband, <laughs> her husband. <laughs> but, you know, uh, being a preto vello at that time, you know, he was not her husband. He was this other spirit, you know, so. Anyway. I have fantastic footage of all these. Uh, and this is the typical gestures that they do when they are on the uh, incorporated uh, black spirit. And in other cases, other spirits, they call it encantados. Many of these ideas, they came from the Northeast. You know. um, okay, uh, in 1992, there was this conference, which I think that it was also very important uh, for the globalization of Ayahuasca and, then, and, and the interest in plants in, in general. Not everybody is here, but you had Manolo and Donna, and then the, I think Jay Scalaway is there. Yes, Jay Scalaway, who did a study uh, on the alkaloids, Ayahuasca alkaloids, and uh, Jose uh, Feriglia, who then introduced him to Spain, and it was, uh, uh, and, and so on. So this, this conference was very important because the Jonathan Ott was there, and out of this conference, many other conferences came after. So we have this, then the, the, we had one in Lerida, in two years later in Spain, then it went to San Francisco, then it went to Amsterdam, I think, then it went to Canada, and that was the end of it. You know, but, uh, but out of this came also the, uh, um, uh, Terence and Rob Montgomery, Montgomery's uh, the, the Palenque, the series of Palenque. You know? I think it was uh, Manolo who told me this, this is true. That the, the idea of the Palenque thing came out of, of this meeting as well. So, and Jonathan Ott, especially, absolutely very important, he published his ayahuasca analogs. And so, uh, so we have ayahuasca as a, as, a, as a print, 
you know, footprint for many other possibilities. Dennis did the, the, the study on the beta carbolins and DMT. Uh, uh, Jonathan published the other possibilities of, of uh, creating something similar. And nowadays we have a huge experimentation around the world with all sorts of, uh, of uh, ayahuasca australis, uh, uh, pharma, well, uh, 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 with mimosa, with, uh, uh, with uh, 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 Syrian rue, and so on. And um, one of the things that happens with ayahuasca is just like, I mean, it's impossible to keep up anymore, you know, because they know, these are only a little part of it. You know, the number of, of books, you know, people take ayahuasca and, you know, they, they have to, you know, make sense of this and they write the story. Uh, and, uh, of course, you know, this is one of the, one of the, the, the things that, that happens. It's, it's like a um, tremendous influx of creativity. The, uh, I mean, I have taken ayahuasca now over a thousand, thousand times, so trying to, to, to see it as much as possible objectively. And there are moments in which it's like, it's like your, your imagination, you know, it's just flowing freely in front of you. You have to make any efforts, it's just in front of you. Just, you know, and I sometimes do experiments like, for instance, think of a concept, flower, and then flowers come out, all sorts of flowers that I have not think of, or, or water, or lakes, or birds, or even the other day, I think it's telephone, and psh, all these telephones, you know, from all, you know, and then bicycle, psh, 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 all these, just like huge database that we have and produce instantaneously, you know, and I've been thinking, what a tool we have here, you know, uh, of course, when uh, people take ayahuasca, they have to go through the personal thing first, you know, you know, relationships and, you know, their own traumas, whatever, you know, but gradually and sometimes uh, the, the, uh, the, the problem is that your worldview seriously is challenged, you know, because you start to think about, you know, the nature of reality, what is this, is true or not, and so on. But, uh, but it's just fantastic how, how, you know, suddenly you have in front of you this possibility of once you go through all that, do it as, as an experiment, you know, experientially, as an experiment. And uh, I know that so many people take ayahuasca, healing is very important, and Ralph Messner was talking in a previous conference that this has to be the most important uh, ayahuasca because it's healing to all levels, you know, personal healing and healing of society and healing of the planet, of, you know, and all this, you know. But I think that it is also possible that we can use it also as a tool of investigation, a research tool, you know, in which once you more or less, you know, are able to handle all these situations, let's work on something, you know, a group of people work on something. And it is my dream to, to be able to do that, you know, to, to have small groups with a particular problem and let's work on this, you know. Well, so many artists uh, uh, inspired by ayahuasca is, is in, well, not only artists, you know, I mean, it's, it's filmmakers, you know, it is uh, musicians, it is opera, uh, I remember, uh, I, I recall in, 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 in a composer who made an opera. This is, you know, it's just like an explosion of creativity that is coming out of this. And uh, that is, uh, of course, very positive, but also a little bit worrisome is what will happen with ayahuasca. Because now is so many in the media, is in the media. Um, I'm afraid that there are the two great institutions are trying to get hold of it. You know, the religious institutions that very often, are, fortunately, can be quite dogmatic and say, no, no, this is the way, you know, this is. Then we have, uh, then we have the medical institutions, they say, okay, this is our domain because it's healing and all this, this is ours, you know. Of course, the gender, you have the indigenous people, you know, this is our tradition, what is this, you know, why you are taking this from us and all that. You don't, you, you take it out of context, you don't understand really, you know. And, uh, and then we have people like, well, this is my position, I just want to know, I mean, I just want to know, without taking this or that, you know. 
uh, just I want to know. I want to see what happens. I know I want to use it to understand my own mind and, uh, and trying to get in touch with all these uh, scientists uh, that see it from different perspective. And very interesting that mm, all the scientists I know that are working with uh, ayahuasca or uh, all the substances, they have personal experience. And in fact, if you begin to search why you started to, store, uh, to study alkali, oh, I had this ayahuasca experience, oh, this experience, I want to know what is, what is behind, you know. So we have all this extraordinary movement of, um, of r research. Um, so, I think that, I'll show you some. Slides. I, I, part of the work I do is organizing um, visionary art exhibitions. And this is, for instance, a, a, a work by Rick Harlow from Boston. You see, I don't know, it's, it's too, too light here. You see the Maloka, the, you know, he's inside a Maloka. He was, uh, and, and then you see the visions uh, uh, superimposed to the Maloka. Okay, and here just end up with this. Uh, this is the new edition of Ayahuasca Reader. Many of the texts that I refer to are there, including the very first one, uh, a, a reference to Ayahuasca. I think that Manolo is going to talk about that, and, and, and many other texts by ethnographers, botanists, and some hymns from the churches and so on. Okay, so I think that this is it. I don't know how, how long, how much time I have. <laughs> okay.